Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along. Okay, so this week I have a appropriately fall themed. I'm just going for it. We're going all the way with the fall theme now. It's almost officially fall uh, and it's my favorite season. Uh, so we're combining two of my favorite things today, which is plaid and pumpkins. I'm going to be doing a black and white plaid. So I'm going to be starting with a black canvas. So this was just a white canvas that I have painted black. The colors that I have on my palette here, I have yellow and orange, blue, it's a cobalt blue, and then more black and white. I have my three standard brushes that I use for the majority of my paintings. Uh, check the description box below for a more detailed list of all the materials that you'll need to paint along each week. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into creating our background. Uh, so we're going to do our plaid with our biggest brush here, and I'm going to use white and a little bit of water. Now my black background is probably like 99.9% .9 dry. So I may end up pulling a little bit of black into my white, which I kind of want, um, cause I want to have a little bit of gray. So I'm actually even going to sneak a little bit of black in there too, um, just to sort of tone down that white so it's not quite so bright and bold. And I'm gonna create uh, my plaid just by using the width of the brush. Okay, so it looks pretty good. You can go over it a few times and then you want to essentially give it another brush strokes width of space before you add an additional white stripe. Okay, so that it's about keeping it even about the width of the brush. And as you can notice, I'm not going back over this and making it like a solid white stripe. I'm letting it be textured in that beautiful canvas texture. Uh, and even pull a little bit in the in the black in spaces where that's still wet and pull it through. Totally fine. We want this to be sort of messy and natural looking. Apologize for the cars driving by. It's never a quiet time. <laughs> Okay, that looks pretty good to me. And then you're just gonna take that same brush stroke technique and pull it from the top down too. So you're creating these nice little boxes for yourself. And that is how to just make a nice little pattern. The possibilities with this plaid background really are endless though. It's kind of exciting. You could do a whole different uh, number of colors. I was thinking about doing a brown background or a teal background. Those are usually my favorites. But I decided to go black and white today. This is similar to a plaid that I would wear. <laughs> and then this is again totally customizable and the possibilities here are endless. Um, but what I'm going to do is take my same big brush and rather than using the face of the brush, I'm going to use the side of the brush now to do some additional lines. Going through the black boxes that I've made. So again, this is totally, this is like your fabric, right? So this is your pattern, however you'd like to do it. Like so, okay. I love it. I'm gonna go ahead and retire that big brush for now. And you'd think that we would wanna let that dry for a second, but actually we're just gonna go ahead and add our pumpkin uh, shapes here and their base colors as well, right on top of the wet white. And it's not going to be an issue. It's just going to blend a little bit. And we're totally fine with that because we're gonna be using white in our base colors here for our pumpkin. So go ahead and take your medium sized brush and you're gonna mix up a light blue. So I'm using that cobalt blue and a little bit of white and we're going to now create our first pumpkin shape. 
So I'm gonna have a blue Cinderella style pumpkin. So cute. I'm so obsessed with pumpkins. Uh, and this is going to be a nice little plump shape. It goes out in either direction. You wanna have a nice round short pumpkin. So this is actually usually what I do each year is I get a cute little shorty pumpkin and then I get a tall pumpkin. <laughs> And then as we begin to fill our pumpkins in, we do want to take our brush strokes along the shape of the pumpkin. Okay, so pulling it from the top kind of center part down and creating curved brush strokes. So again, not worrying at all about pulling the white into that base color. As you can see, it just blends quite nicely. And we don't mind the streakiness because we're going in the direction that our little pumpkin quadrants or pumpkin sections, I suppose, are going to go in. Very nice. So again, little bit of variation there in that paint color. I'm gonna rinse my brush very well. And I'm gonna create the base color of my orange pumpkin, which is just gonna be right next door. So same medium brush, gonna take a big old scoop of orange and mix it with some yellow, make a gorgeous pumpkin orange. Okay, and then the same idea, but taller. So not quite as fat of a pumpkin. And then also go ahead and just take it off the side of the canvas here. Just right off the edge. That's a nice bright orange. And you can grab a little bit of yellow in there and then also a little bit of white to help you fill in. And sometimes I just blend right on the canvas rather than on my palette. So you don't have to, you know, if you want a light orange, you can just grab some white and just put that right on top. So there's a play as acrylic paint dries. You can work with what's called wet on wet blending. Okay, so being again mindful of the direction that our paint brush strokes are going. up and down for this tall guy you gotta decide which pumpkin is in front of each other or which which one is in front of which one okay so for this one you can have the blue one in front okay and then again just filling that in in the direction that the pumpkin uh, sections would go and then See, I've made that big, so I gotta commit to that size. So just do a little bit of adjusting. If you start small, you can always make it bigger. Okay, that looks about right to me. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the stems. So we're gonna mix up a quick brown. I'm just getting all the different base colors. So I'm just going across the color wheel here from blue to orange, which are opposites. That's gonna create a pretty nice brown. I'm gonna tone it down a little bit with some black. And maybe just a pinch of white as well. Okay. And now this brush stroke does, if you're quite deliberate about it. You can make a nice little curly cue, like so. Super cute. You don't have to do that. You can also just do a little boop. I think I'm gonna do like one of each kind. So that's actually just gonna go off the canvas there too. 
All right, so those base colors are looking really good. Let's just do one little wet on wet uh, blending move here really quick with some white. I'm going to go in here and add just a few streaks while the paint is wet to kind of start to exaggerate and create some depth uh, in our colors here. Okay, we're gonna add another whole round of highlights. This is just that first little bit to get that in that wet paint really pretty and subtle okay let's go ahead and let this dry uh, for a few minutes and we're gonna let it dry completely so that we can add a whole another uh, round of different elements and it's really going to make everything look great okay so let's go ahead and take a few minutes and let this dry and I'll see you in a few okay welcome back I have a mostly dry painting here Got a little bit impatient waiting for it to dry fully. <laughs> uh, so again, it's about the 99.9% .9 uh, dryness level. So I rinsed my brushes at break. I got some fresh water and then also some fresh colors. So again, I have my orange, white, yellow. I have now a phthalo green. Uh, and then as well as my cobalt blue and a little bit of black. Let's go ahead and create our leaves. Uh, for the next step. So go ahead and grab your medium sized brush. I'm going to mix up uh, just a nice vibrant green. And you can decide however you want to put your leaves uh, on your composition. Um, but for me, and actually I think I'm going to downgrade my brush size too for the shapes. Just for a little bit more control. So actually I'm going to use my my smallest tiny brush for this. Uh, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do my first leaf attached here to my blue pumpkin. So three little quadrants here. And then here from the left, I'm gonna create a little spiral, little curling cue. Very cute shape. And then you can decide whether you want to have a leaf on your orange pumpkin. You can also just leave it as is. I think what I'm going to do just for him is just a little curly cue. Very cute. And I'm going to grab my medium brush just to fill in that green leaf that I have on my blue pumpkin. And I just think that little bit of green looks nice as well in the painting. So again, you can add as many leaves as you would like. Just filling it in with that base green color. And then I'm gonna leave it alone for a little bit so that we can come back later and add some highlights and shadows there as well. Okay, now let's take that same medium brush. We're gonna do uh, a little bit of shadow work here in our pumpkins. Let's start with our blue pumpkin. I'm gonna grab just a pinch of blue and black together and create a nice dark navy blue. And I'm gonna very deliberately choose now where my shadows are gonna be. So these are gonna be the little sections of my pumpkin. It's almost like the plaid and like you want it to be evenly spaced and like eyeballing out each section. About like so. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so boop, 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 boop. We got our little sections there, understanding the shape of our pumpkin. Now we're gonna do the same thing with our orange pumpkin. We're gonna use brown for that. A little black in the orange mixed with a little bit of blue. It's gonna give us that nice dark brown. Going in the direction that we already had start 
had started to put our brush strokes when we were filling in. I used to love drawing pumpkins when I was little. Okay, looks good. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but with highlights. Uh, so either way, you can do this orange pumpkin first or blue pumpkin first. I think I'm just gonna go switch back and forth, back to my blue pumpkin now. Just loading up now a light blue on my brush. I'm gonna come all the way out there. These are gonna be in the opposite areas as your shadows. Now, if you go a little bit too bold, you can add some light blue right back on top. Oops. I kinda like that because it's like a reflection of the pumpkin, but for continuity's sake, just cover that up. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that's looking pretty cute. All right, and again, we don't want to go too light because we will get stripy. All right, just a little bit in each little section of pumpkin, creating interest there, creating depth. And then we're gonna do the same thing with our orange. You can add a little bit of yellow in as well. That depends on what color you like. Totally up to you. All right, and already those pumpkins look a lot more interesting in my opinion. Okay, let's grab our baby brush now. Uh, we're gonna start adding some white and black. Now, believe it or not, we're actually kind of in the home stretch here. Uh, so let's start with our darkest shadows here. So with that black, I'm going to outline my pumpkin shapes, making that nice and clean edge. And I'm gonna come in here into my stems, outline those, and then also just do a few little brush strokes coming up to create some shadows. Again, remember acrylic paint is a play, so if you ever go too heavy handed with a color, you just add that underneath color right back on top. Okay, like so. And then into those brown shadows that you just created as well. But if you just do it at the top part and at the bottom part, it's going to, again, create that illusion of roundness. Okay, so the way the center part is just brown. Right next to your little curly cue, go ahead and take a black Curly Q as well. Nice. I'm gonna come back in there and clean that up just a little bit. So you actually wanna have like the green line right next to the black line as if it's a shadow. I think that my green needs a little bit more vibrancy. There we go. That green with the orange, I think is just very, very fall. There we go. That looks better. Okay. Cute. All right, then we're gonna do the same thing over in our blue pumpkin. So again, a few brush strokes kind of coming up into your stem. And then you're just gonna outline the stem shape as well. 
And then we're outlining our pumpkins themselves, making sure we understand which one is in front of the other. Very nice, like so. Go ahead and outline your leaf as well. This does not need to be super neat. A little bit of sketchiness here I think goes a long way. And then again, I'm just gonna come from the bottom here pulling up into those navy shadows and then also from the top down into the same shadows. Darkening the darkest places. All right, and now we're going to highlight the lightest places. And this is really a little piece of the resistance, uh, which I think really makes everything look really nice and cute. Gonna grab a little bit of yellow now. I'm gonna just add a few brush strokes of yellow inside of my green leaf. Oh, let's grab a little bit of black too and just add a little line in our leaf there also. Kind of finishing touches here. And you can add a little bit of yellow if you want on your curly hues as well. It's up to you. I think that looks nice little highlight there. And then just a little bit of white here and there is going to be the final touch. You want to be light handed with this. So I'm going to highlight my stems. As you go in each area, you may need to rinse your brush in between. Again, using my smallest brush, make sure you have a nice clean white. They say the difference between a good painting and a great painting is five brush strokes. So be very deliberate about these last few. You don't, again, want to do too many because you'll get Kind of a stripey effect. A little bit too stripey. So just the lightest highlights. Okay. All right, that looks really cute. I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, let's do a little bit of white in here as well. Yeah, and that is all I have for you guys today. So let me know what you thought of this really cute and funky painting in the comment section below. Uh, if you painted along today, I've created a Facebook group called The Art Club, where we share our creations, whether it be from painting along uh, or just from your own studio and imagination. Uh, so I'd love to see you over in The Art Club. There's a link to join that in the description box below. And again, I'm gonna put everything in the description box also in the comments. Uh, just in case you're watching on your phone, sometimes it's hard to access the description box. So I'll get that in there for you guys as well. So again, thank you so much for painting along and until next time, stay creative.